Hey guys, Matt from Red Wings Rant, of course, from the Hockey Podcast Network, which uh, all of our content is sponsored by DraftKings. Uh, so you want to go over to DraftKings.com or download the app and use promo code THPN when you sign up to unlock a ton of rewards and unlockable ways to play at DraftKings. So go check that out right now. And of course, uh, DraftKings is a helping sponsor. This preview right now, Detroit Red Wings versus the Predators, Game 21 of the Detroit Red Wings schedule. This one's going to take place at Little Caesars Arena. All-time Detroit versus Nashville at uh, LCA is 1-2-0. and two And, oh. and uh, the season series so far, just the two games, 1-1. One and one. Uh, Detroit losing the first one, 3-2, but then taking over in game number two, 4-2. And what we want to talk about today... Uh, a couple things uh, to keep an eye out for, and we'll go over some goaltender probables. Uh, we'll go over some players to watch and a couple of keys that we think are going to help the Detroit Red Wings get over the hump uh, and uh, get closer to maybe 500, right? Uh, we want to win two games in a row here. It's uh, the only way we're going to do it. The Red Wings are coming in after losing a tough one, 7-2 to two to Florida. Uh, one of the worst games the Red Wings played all season. And you could check out all of our analysis uh, at our YouTube channel. Of course, you could be watching that right now. Uh, but that is the Brothers of Discussion. You could subscribe to Red Wings Rant Episodes, which is one of our playlists. You're not going to miss a thing. Uh, what we saw there was a complete unraveling of the strategy that the Detroit Red Wings have been known for. Shut down other teams' offenses and control the events per game. Keep them low. It's going to be low for Detroit, but it's also going to be low for the opponent when you get into the third period. Just a matter of a shot and a bounce going Detroit's way. They let go of that completely. Now, game number two against the Panthers, it also, if you take a look, didn't necessarily go completely Detroit's way, uh, especially when you compare the expected goals between uh, both franchises going at it. You actually saw it in favor of the Florida Panthers. So where's our big differences? Where do the Red Wings find a win against the Panthers? Well, you had Jonathan Bernier playing one of his best games as a Detroit Red Wing, honestly, uh, because we are going up against the division-leading Florida Panthers. Uh, but you also get to change what the narrative has been all season in regards to the Red Wings trying to put goals on board. You saw Matthias Brome put one in and Patrick Nemeth. Both of those going against the grain of what they've been able to produce all season, both of them getting their first goal. Of course, Bromace being his first of his career, almost saw him jump out of his pants. Uh, so what the Detroit Red Wings are looking to do is to continue that secondary scoring, but also, come on, guys, we have got to see some goals going up for Anthony Mantha. We've got to see him going up for Dylan Larkin. We've got to see some goals going up for Phillips Adina. Let's get those uh, donors going full blow. Woo, what a bad choice of words that was. All right. <laughs> uh, as we continue to roll here, uh, the Nashville Predators are going to be coming into Detroit, having just beat the Columbus Blue Jackets 4-2 to uh, after having been shut out 3 to nothing. So uh, let me jump in here. And what we want to do is take a quick look at uh, some more specifics for tonight's game. As we mentioned, uh, Detroit and Nashville split the first two games. Goaltender probables tonight. I'm going to go with Jonathan Bernier only because he's the hot hand. He's had a couple of days to rest. So we don't have to worry about that. He's at a 9-10 save percentage, 2.74 goals against average. And he'll be going up against Pecorine, who I think would like to redeem himself after that last game. We'll get into that in a little bit. He's at a 9.08 save percentage, 265 goals against average. And he's playing better than UC Saros. So at this point, you're going with the hot hands for both of these teams. And a little inkling there. Pecorino might be looking for some redemption. Uh, DraftKings odds. Again, Red Wings Rant, the Hockey Podcast Network, sponsored by DraftKings. Use promo code THPN at sign up to unlock rewards. Uh, puck line, uh, of course, plus 1.5 for Detroit. It'll be that way all season. Uh, it's uh, minus 195 there. Um, money line is plus 140. Uh, so if you want to pick the Red Wings to win, uh, and then, of course, uh, Nashville is the minus 1.5, money line minus 162. That, of course, means they are the favorites. Uh, and uh, players to watch for this game, I'm going to go through this list here. Dylan Larkin, only because you got to think after that last game, or he has been putting up the assists. And, man, oh man, do you like seeing him skate around because Matthias Brome does not have a goal without Dylan Larkin flying up and down the ice. Something seems to have been turned on by Dylan. 
something could be a it could be healing uh could be an injury that we weren't yet aware of and it was something that larkin just couldn't we couldn't afford to have him off the ice as well it's uh god forbid we want to see this team get absolutely lunched but uh whatever it was still larkin was playing his nuts off in the last game you got to think things are going to turn his way i'm smelling some goals for larkin tonight i'm also looking at matthias Brome. Now, if we saw what Anzer Khan posted on uh, Twitter, uh, Brome is getting demoted after getting his first goal. But we know that things aren't going to stay that way with Blashill in charge. And uh, hey, I'm one. I don't blame him for that. He's got to find the way. Of, he's got to find a way for that puck to move up the ice. He's got to find scoring chances. So yeah, call it the Blashill blender. Give him a hard time. But you know what? He's got a hard job right now. That being said, I want to see Matthias Brome build up some momentum here from getting that first goal. I feel like this could be something where the uh, he's going to break through. Uh, that's all he needed was to see that first goal because we saw some amazing chances from him, including uh, the Peter Forsberg uh, attempt uh, on the breakaway, and uh, it just didn't go through. So the guy's got his, he's got his gumption. He's got the cojones to try those attempts, uh, so I want to see more of that. And uh, you know what? I'm throwing Manta on there, too, uh, for the Red Wings. It, it's just the same sort of story. Uh, but where we saw Dylan Larkin really building it up, I want to see Manta look like Dylan Larkin on the ice. And that's not to say that Manta's going to be spreading, uh, you know, around uh, the same type of production that Larkin can build up just through his speed. What we want to see is Manta using what he does best. And when we say he skates well, we mean that with his longer legs, he's going to be powering those strides through. And for Detroit sports fans, I mean, we want to see it look like Calvin Johnson running to grab a bomb from Matthew Stafford. That is how we expect to see Mantha running up or skating up and down the ice. And uh, you want to see that. You want to see the confidence. And we saw it with his goal against Pekka. Or actually, I'm sorry, he scored against UC Soros. But we saw that in the 4-2 to victory uh, where Mantha just came down the ice Shot the puck with all the confidence in the world right over the shoulder. We know Mantha can shoot it, but we want to see him carrying carrying that swagger. That's what Mantha should have. He he's now one of the highest paid players on the team. So I'm I'm just asking to see more shots that we saw uh, that could create a goal. I, I don't need to see the production today. I just want to see Mantha turn it up. Now from uh, the Predators side. Uh, I'm throwing out Philip Forsberg out there as a player to watch. Three points in those last couple of games. I really thought he was commanding whatever he wanted to do, uh, along with uh, Roman Yossi and 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 Fabro of all people, uh, <laughs> racking up the points against Detroit. Uh, he is a very good defenseman. Uh, just not one. I mean, I, I just played fantasy uh, hockey for the first time, daily fantasy hockey. Uh, he was a cheap guy to pick up. So uh, <laughs> in that regard. Not, uh, you know, not taking anything away from Fabro, but he really, uh, he's got our number from that first series. So with that, I, I want to take those ideas from players to watch, Forsberg, uh, Yossi, and Fabro, and and we're going to dive deep here in what I think are the keys to the game. Uh, I, I want to start with using that last change to take advantage of, uh, of what the Red Wings will be throwing out there and what the Predators are going to be throwing out there. Because one thing the Predators had was that last change. So if we're going to say a leader on this team is Philip Forsberg, and especially Yossi, and, and Fabro has his, had his, his time with the Red Wings in, in that last series, I say, first of all, focus on Forsberg. And if you take a look at our blog at bodpodcast.com slash Red Wings Rant, that is where my head's at. I want to focus on Forsberg. I want to use that last change to make sure that he's not controlling the puck as well as he did uh, in those first couple of games. Forsberg had the fifth, over 50% in Corsi 4. He had the over 50% in expected goals. So I think it's something that you could almost eliminate him as a real threat if you can control who's on the ice stopping Forsberg. And uh, right now, I, I mean, you got to point out that if Glenn Denning can get out there and win a face-off and keep the puck away from Forsberg, I don't mind a face-off and a change. But whatever it takes, take advantage of that and make sure that the leaders that are on the ice are the ones that you snuff out first. Now, we also have uh, throwing the puck at the net or peppering the net is the way I'm putting it is, is because we saw such a terrible game from Pecorine. And if I could sit here and say, I think Pecorine is going to be the guy in that and he, has, he is going to be looking for redemption. Uh, if you can test him early and see where his head's at, uh, that, that'll do all, all the work you need. Uh, if it is something where he's on, 
you know that you're going to tighten up those second and third periods. Go ahead. Lose the Corsi Four, lose the expected goals battle. That's fine. But what you got to do is limit the chances going both ways, and you got to keep this a one goal game going into the third. We know where the talent level is at with these two teams. We know who, even though the records are as close as possible between anybody in the Central Division, uh, and, and, and then taking into consideration the Red Wings being dead last, we, we know what the records being as close as possible, where that talent level lies, where the, the differences are uh, in talent. So just you know, accept it. <laughs> if you want to find a win, that's how you're going to do it. But if you're peppering him early, maybe let go of that strategy a little bit. See where Pecorine's head, at, head is at. Do the Red Wings have his number this year? Uh, it's something where instead of playing the analytics game, we're playing head games. But let's test it. Let's see what's going on. Uh, third thing here for me, juice up that power play. And of course, I'm speaking of Christian Juice. I want to get him on that first power play unit. He's gotten some time. I want to see as much as possible. Anytime there's a power play, get him out there first. What we showed you earlier this week through uh, our Twitter at BOD Hockey was, of course, uh, a quick experiment I did to see where all defensemen were at in regards to uh, you, you want to take a look at expected goals and on ice shot percentage. So we're taking uh, maybe something that would be measured through PDO where you're looking at puck luck. Let's just take the on ice shot percentage. Uh, because the high save percentage is something we don't need to worry about at all on the power play. Measuring those two, and you could make the association of the on ice shot percentage being our puck luck. I actually determined that Christian Juice, through this measurement, through uh, statistics given to us through uh, Natural Stat Trick, that he is the unluck the unluckiest defenseman to play on the power play over the last three years. So that is to say we're basing this off of averages. Uh, so there are guys who have obviously gotten a lot more power play time than Christian Juice over those three years. But when he's on the ice, he's generating chances. It's just they haven't gone in. So this is one of those things where if you give him more ice time, you're going to be playing the law of averages. Probably one of my favorite things to throw out there during Red Wings Rant episodes. Play those law of averages. Juice has got to break through at some point. And it's not necessarily him scoring. It's his on-ice shot percentage that is... The lowest of all defensemen, despite him being in the upper tier, uh, I, I would say in the top third of the league of all defensemen playing on the power play, he's in the top third of expected goals according to natural stat trick over the, first, uh, the last three years. But just that actual result, that goal, where we're talking the other guys on the ice, including Jews, getting that shot through the goalie, it's just not going in. The bounces aren't going their way at this point. Eventually, that's going to turn, and it's going to turn with more ice time. So those are my three keys to the game. Uh, another key here that doesn't necessarily pertain to the Red Wings winning, but both of these teams don't want to let this series get away from them. Uh, this isn't something where I expect uh, two wins from the Red Wings anymore because I know that the Red Wings come into every series as that win you can't let get away. But it's the same idea for the Red Wings here with the Nashville Predators. They need to get out of this series with one win to save some semblance of respectability in this season. Uh, it, it's not something where with these Blackhawks series where they've let them they, they've let them get away. This has to be one victory in here somewhere. And you know the Red Wings have not been one to find two victories in a row, so maybe it's not this game. That being said. Uh, both myself and Jesse are going to go with the Red Wings. Jesse, who's our normal uh, blogger, who's on, uh, he's actually, his assignment now is to uh, review Michael Rasmussen and where he stands right now. So you guys want to keep an eye out at bodpodcast.com slash Red Wings. Right. He's picking the Wings 4-2. to two. I am picking the Red Wings 3-1. Uh, to one. I'm just going to play this game here of Bernier's. Bernier's going to bring it again. He's on a hot streak. Keep him in net. He's going to go one last goal than he was uh, the last uh, the last game. And uh, I'm going to attribute that to where the talent level is at and the, the uh, differences between the Florida Panthers and Nashville Predators. Red Wings will take advantage of that and get the win. If there is an opportunity for the Red Wings to win a series or sweep a two-game series, it's this one, including the ones with the Blackhawks. I have no problem saying that. They're still not the best team in this division, despite where uh, their points have them at. I think they're still gettable and if you take a look at all the wins it's like ah, you know what this isn't what we're here to talk about let's get back into this predators game i'm still picking the red wings to win uh but look for this series if the wings don't win tonight they will most 
definitely get that next game. That That's where the guarantee lies with the uh, Red Wings rant right now. One of these games will be a win for the Wings. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we do want you guys to check out our Twitter. If you follow us and retweet our pinned post right now, you will have a chance at winning a Red Wings jersey. Now, we are in competition with every podcast on the Hockey Podcast Network. So the only way we're going to get you that chance to win the Red Wings jersey is if you retweet at BOD Hockey and follow us. That way, uh, we can increase our numbers with retweets because, again, it's got to be every podcast in the Hockey Podcast Network. Uh, but then if you follow us, you will have that opportunity uh, to uh, to win that jersey. So two jobs there, going to at BOD Hockey, follow and retweet our pinned post. Uh, or uh, pin tweet, and then uh, you know, just go ahead and give us a follow. And the best thing you can do for us to help us grow is go to Apple Podcasts, subscribe, rate, and review us. Uh, go ahead and uh, start listening to those Red Wing Rant episodes. That's the first uh, little bitty you're hearing from us. And find us on YouTube as the Brothers of Discussion. Uh, please subscribe to that channel, and of course, you can subscribe to our Red Wings Rant episodes uh, so that you don't miss a thing. And when we go live, you're going to get that notification. So make sure you do set up notifications for the Brothers of Discussion and for that playlist of Red Wings Rant. All right. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, and enjoy the game.